Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. I am going out of town in two days. Well, today's Monday, I'm going out of town on Wednesday. And I've got produce in my refrigerators, both the inside and outside refrigerator. I have this huge table full of tomatoes that need to be taken care of. And my goal today is to try to get everything stable, preserved one way or another before I leave out of town. The last thing I want to do is come back and have a bunch of wasted produce. That would be pretty sad. So let's go ahead and get straight to it. Let's get some preserving done. The first thing I'm going to do is get these tomatoes in our large stock pot. I could cook these in a roaster pan, but I want this to go a little bit faster. So we're going to go ahead and do it in this roaster pan or this stock pot. And I do have finally a hand blender. So I can just throw these right in here. We're gonna add a few more ingredients and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna can this up. I also wanna get some food prepped for Josh so that he can have some yummy food while I'm gone because he's not going. I'm going with my mom. I'm going to the Homesteaders of America Conference in Virginia. My goal is to try to eliminate this entire table from my dining room. I have this about half full so I can carry it. I'm gonna bring this over to the stove. My tried and true way to do this is on, in a roaster pan. But like I said, I want to do this faster than that. So I'm gonna turn this pretty warm and we're just gonna start letting this cook down. We're gonna add quite a few more ingredients. And I've got a list of things I wanna get done. One of them, do you ever write on your to-do list things like shower, things you may have already done or you know you're gonna do just so you can feel like you accomplished something? I'm gonna get this pot completely full and then we're gonna start on our next project right here. How pretty is this pot? Yeah, this is already helping kind of break things down a little bit. Get some of the juices flowing. Gonna do some chopping with these two. Now I'm gonna put the green tomatoes that still are ripening in here, and we'll take care of these when we take care of the tomatoes that I have in the freezer. We have two of our pumpkins. I'm gonna put these on the porch for decoration. This is a little bit of a bittersweet moment. It feels like it takes forever for tomato season to get started here. And then all of a sudden you're drowning in tomatoes and then it comes to a close. It's not totally done for us. We will be able to enjoy those fresh green tomatoes. They'll be ripe when I get back and then I do have a huge paper bag full of tomatoes in the freezer still, and we will be taking care of those when we get back. I'm thinking homemade barbecue sauce. I've never made barbecue sauce out of tomatoes. I always make it out of rhubarb because I have a ton of rhubarb, but I think I wanna try that, but we'll see when we get back. I also took the time to clean up this table. It always feels good when I get my tomato ripening table out of the kitchen. I am a fan of more of a minimal look and so it does always feel good to get this kind of buttoned up. I'm gonna put the harvest baskets away. I won't be needing those until next year. We are meeting with our landscaper this next week to go over the garden plans for 2022 and I am, 2023, and I'm so excited about it. I just grabbed a bunch of produce that we're gonna start preserving up right now. So these are just some of the things we need to take care of today. These are all from the garden. We're gonna make our peach, peach, sugar rush, pepper hot sauce today. We've got some green beans we need to process, a ton of these red serranos. I need to run downstairs and do some grocery shopping. I need to grab some more onions and garlic. We are going to use these dehydrated onions to thicken our sauce. We need to do something with our ferments. This has now been fermenting for 
five days, I think, or a week. I just come in here and I stir it every day. You can see how bubbly. Before we get to any more chopping or food preservation or anything like that, I'm gonna get going on Josh's breakfast for the week. We are gonna make the Starbucks egg bite. It's a copycat recipe. These things are so good. And they're so expensive if you wanna buy them at Starbucks. It's like $5 for two tiny little egg bites. And I'm gonna show you how to make them for a fraction of the cost. I have our farm fresh eggs here. We're gonna crack 12. I'm gonna double this recipe. I've never frozen them before and I kinda wanna test that to see how that goes. So we're gonna put 12 eggs in our blender. The Starbucks recipe uses Gruyere cheese. I don't have any Gruyere cheese. You can use whatever kind of cheese you want. You could substitute cheddar. I'm going to put Parmesan because that's what I have. These are fresh eggs. I just collected them today, so I'm not worried about them being bad. So I am just cracking them right into my blender. And I don't have a rooster, so I don't have to worry about them being fertilized or anything like that. Now for a double recipe, I'm gonna put 16 ounces, so this whole container of cottage cheese right into the blender. Pepper. That was some garlic salt. And then I'm gonna just cut up some of this Parmesan cheese to throw in the blender along with the other ingredients. Now we have this really smooth consistency. You don't need to use muffin liners if you don't want to, but I definitely like to use muffin liners. It just makes cleanup a lot easier. And I can't find my bigger muffin tins, so we're gonna have to do this in batches. And then I am gonna spray them with a little bit of avocado oil. I have some bacon I pre-cooked the other day. So I'm gonna chop up some of this and we're gonna top our egg bites with bacon. You wanna be careful not to overfill these because they are gonna puff up quite a bit. So no more than two thirds. I have a pie plate with water that is very, very hot. So it's gonna help kind of steam these egg bites. I have the oven preheated to 300 degrees. We're gonna cook these low and slow so we don't get a lot of browning. We're not looking to brown the eggs. We kinda of wanna make it like a, a custard. This one, I got the egg underneath the wrapper, which is kind of a bummer because that is going to kind of stick, but that's okay. So now you just put a couple pieces of bacon on each one, not a lot. That's why you really don't need a lot of bacon when you're making these. It's kind of just for flavoring. You could put chopped up peppers, you could put broccoli, green onions, kind of whatever veggie you want on it. You could get really creative with it, but I haven't chopped up any of those veggies yet, so we are just gonna do it just the traditional way. While these cook, we're gonna start chopping veggies, so if I have some chopped, maybe we will get them in here. So now we have that in the oven with some water. We're gonna let that bake at 300, and we're gonna make one on a couple other things. Our pot is getting warm. I've got some pre-chopped garlic. We gotta chop a lot more for some other projects we're doing today, but we're gonna get some garlic in here. Mix that up. And let's get chopping on some of our peppers and onions for hot sauce we're gonna make. Today is the day we are finally getting to our peach sugar rush peppers. I'm so excited about these. These were peppers that were, the seed was a gift in my P.O. box 
And as soon as I got these seeds, I just had the thought that, you know what, we need to make hot sauce using these peppers. So I'm gonna get some gloves on. They need to be washed. And I'm going to de-stem them. I am gonna keep the seeds in there because I want that heat. They're beautiful, beautiful peppers, but they definitely need to be washed. So all we're gonna do is cut the stems off, throw them in our colander, give them a wash. And I did go peach picking at a local orchard and I grabbed some peaches that are in the freezer that I froze in order to do this project. So this is gonna be all locally sourced ingredients, I guess, except for the sugar and the vinegar that we're gonna put in here are not gonna be locally sourced, but this is really exciting. I've been waiting all year for this. I'm gonna make a little bit of room on this cutting board so we can get an onion chopped up for our hot sauce. And I also want to get, let's see, I want to get an onion chopped up for the tomato sauce too. I just realized I didn't leave any room in that pot with the peppers for the peaches. Because we got to get peaches to fit in there. So we're going to have to get creative when it comes to filling everything in that pot. I, that's the biggest stainless steel pot I have other than my really, really big one that we're using for our tomatoes. I made hot sauce last year once with my enamel cast iron, my enamel covered cast iron Dutch oven. And that was a really bad idea because there is part of the cast iron that's exposed. And when you make hot sauce, you use a lot of vinegar and it kind of rusted part of it. It's taken me basically a year to recover that pot. So we'll, we'll get creative and we'll figure out how to make it all fit. But we need onions for our tomato sauce and for our hot sauce. Oh, that's the timer for our, woo, that's the timer for our eggs. The onions are hot. Let's see. Oh, those are not even close to being done yet. Those look weird. Normally they puff up more, so I'm not sure if I need to reread my recipe and see if I did something wrong. I don't think I did anything wrong. It's weird. We'll see, hopefully they turn out. I'm gonna set a timer for five more minutes. I forgot to set a timer when we first started, so maybe I just didn't, ha I haven't had them in there long enough yet. onions in this stock pot. I have already used a few of these cans that we made earlier this year of this base, the onion garlic base tomato. It's so convenient to have because you already have two of the staple ingredients and you don't have to chop a bunch of onions and garlic because you've already done it and it's in the jar. But I am going to pressure can this tomato sauce. I want to get these onions in here to start cooking down and softening so we can blend them up really well. And then in here, we're going to add our onions that I chopped up or peeled earlier. These are the homegrown teeny tiny onions. We're going to get these in here. I guess I didn't chop them. I just peeled them, but they're so little, I'm going to keep them whole. And now we get to figure out how to put these peaches in this pot. And I didn't thaw the peaches out either, which I probably should have. I'm going to turn the stove on. Let's see. You know what, maybe, should I microwave these peaches and kind of get them, not in the plastic bag, but I need to check on the eggs too. I'm gonna give them another minute. They didn't puff up, which is really weird. Okay, let's see. 
I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna go ahead and microwave these peaches. I have a feeling I'll be able to fit more peppers into that pot if I get these peaches a little bit thawed. Let's start with that. And then I am gonna get some of these ingredients cooking down in here so that the peppers and onions can soften up. I'm putting three fourths a cup of sugar in there, a tablespoon of salt, and six cups of vinegar. Okay, we're gonna get that cooking, and then as soon as the peaches are thawed out of the microwave, we will get those in here as well. And I think our egg bites are done. Normally they puff up a little bit more than that, so I'm not sure why they didn't puff up a ton, but they, they smell really good. I'm gonna fill them a little fuller this time and see if that helps them puff up. Because normally they double in size. Maybe I didn't whip it in the blender long enough. I think, friends, we are going to be able to get this to fit in here, which is awesome. Perfect. That could not have been a better fit. So we're gonna let this simmer away for 20 to 30 minutes. We still have a couple more ingredients we need to add to it, but we have to prep them first. I guess it's not a couple more ingredients. It's just we need to put some garlic in there. I'm not gonna chop this garlic. All I'm gonna do is get it peeled and we're gonna plop whole garlic in both the tomato sauce and our hot sauce. So we have some of our tomatoes in here. These are sun-dried tomatoes or just dehydrated tomatoes that I dehydrated last year from the garden. And what I'm gonna do is throw those in here. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. These are all different kinds of tomatoes. There's Roma tomatoes and cherry tomatoes and just all different kinds of tomatoes in here. and thick this is. This is what is going to allow us to have a really beautiful thick sauce. That hot sauce wants to keep boiling over without having to have us cook this down for as long. I think I'm gonna do a few more of these sun-dried tomatoes so I'm gonna get a little bit more liquid in here. I definitely wanna make sure that I cook this long enough that the onions get really, really tender so we can blend them up really, really smooth with our immersion blender. I'm so happy with this method of thickening up tomato sauce. It comes out of the canner so thick, it doesn't separate. Sometimes when you can tomato sauce, the juice kind of separates from the pulp. And so going forward every year, this is gonna be kind of my go-to way to thicken up my tomato sauce. We are making some great headway. I just ran out to the freeze dryer and pulled out brown rice that I cooked with bone broth. When I made those stuffed peppers, I cooked way too much brown rice and I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. And I had watched one of my friends, Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, she freeze dried cooked rice and especially brown rice, it turns it into instant rice. So I could throw this in a soup I could just warm it up with some water and I have brown rice that's ready to go really easy. So I wanna get this into my jar. This is not something that I probably would have, you know, purposely pre-cooked brown rice in order to make this, but since I have it, it's a great way not to waste anything. And we can use this 
in future meals. I like to put my freeze dried goods in glass because I can see what's in them and I don't plan to keep my freeze dried goods for 30, 20 years. My goal is just to preserve things and use them when I need them. I have never put my freeze dried stuff in Mylar bags. The Mylar bags that come with the Harvest Rate freeze dryer, the one I have, I have the medium size with the Premier Pump. I love it, but the idea of putting it in a Mylar bag that I can't see the contents of it, I just have a feeling that things would get lost. I wouldn't use them versus this. I'm gonna put a nice lid on it. It's gonna stay protected. As long as I keep a lid on it, I don't need to worry about it rehydrating in the amount of time that I'm gonna use it. So that's why I like to store my freeze dried stuff in glass jars. Now what we're gonna do is I went and I pulled out my dehydrator trays. I have not been using my dehydrator hardly at all this year because I've been using my freeze dryer, but I think that there definitely are good applications for the dehydrator versus the freeze dryer. And I'm gonna get these red Serrano peppers dehydrated and I'm gonna turn them into red pepper flakes. I was gonna make hot sauce with them, but friends, you have seen how much hot sauce I've made this year. And I think that even with all the gift giving I plan to do with a lot of this hot sauce, I made enough hot sauce for Josh and I to enjoy for a year and also give hot sauce away to my heart's content. So what I'm gonna do is turn these into red pepper flakes because I love red pepper flakes and I'm excited to have some locally sourced peppers. I didn't grow these ones. These were peppers that I bought from the local farmer and we're gonna get these dehydrated. But I was just watching Flower Hill Farm's latest video and she turned her jalapenos into jalapeno poppers for the freezer. I have a ton of jalapenos. I have a ton of hot peppers. We're gonna go ahead and do that. I wasn't sure how I was going to preserve up those jalapenos and some of those hot peppers, those long hots. So we're just gonna take her recipe and I'm gonna show you how to do it. And we're going to turn it into a yummy appetizer. And kind of my theme of you know, food preservation this year is turn your product into, or turn your harvest into, you know, a final product. So I'm excited about that. I only got two trays of those peppers. They weren't looking super hot, or I should say some of them weren't looking super hot, so I had to go ahead and we're gonna give those to the chickens. I have some family members that prefer a pepper flake versus a vinegary hot sauce like what I've been making. So I'm gonna go ahead and gift some of these to some of those family members at Christmas. Vegetables need to be dehydrated at 125 degrees and I'm gonna put that on for 24 hours and I'll take care of them tomorrow. My freeze dryer, normally I like to run it twice before mirror pump owner it's time to change the oil so it's telling me i need to change the oil i have yet to change the oil on this since i've had it i've watched videos on it and it looks really simple i need to defrost my dehydrator which is really easy to do you just click defrost you put you open the drain valve and normally i like to run my freeze dryer twice before i defrost it and this will only run one time i'm gonna make sure the drain valve is in the pot so that it drains into the pot not onto my floor but because I'm going out of town and I'm not sure how long whatever I would freeze dry it would take I don't want Josh to have to deal with it and it's perfect timing because I need to change the oil if you are interested in learning more about freeze drying I can put a link to the freeze dryer I have and kind of what it's all about and I can even link a playlist of what I freeze dry if you're interested the more I use it the more I love it oh I'm not I should unplug the blender. We need to, let's blend up the sauce and get that canning before we make our jalapeno poppers. This has only been cooking for about two hours or so, and I think it's ready to can, but we're gonna deal with the hot sauce first. I'll let this continue to thicken. Adding those dehydrated tomatoes really helps thicken it up. We still need to blend this, but this has been cooking now 
and everything is really, really tender, so we can go ahead and get this in our jars. But first, we need to blend it. I do need to grab my blender. I rinsed it out really well so we can get our hot sauce in here. Just like what we've done before, we're, oh, I am glad I saw that. That is a big peach pit. I would not want that peach pit going into my blender. We're gonna put that in the compost pile. I have jars that are already washed and ready to go. So as soon as we blend this and strain it, we'll be able to get these into some jars. And you all have taught me that when you're blending in your blender, especially if you're blending hot liquid like this, don't fill the blender more than halfway. And that's when you have it explode on you. I think it has something to do with the heat and steam and pressure and all that good stuff. One thing that's been so fun about making all these hot sauces this year is all the different colors we've been making. We made a green one, a red one, and now this one's a beautiful yellow. Friends, I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. Because I have the dehydrator already going, I am going to save this pepper pulp and peach pulp because this is not like anything I already have on my pantry shelf. I think this will add really good flavor to something this winter and fall. So I am gonna save this. I'm gonna put it on the silicone mat and we will dehydrate this along with those red peppers. We got a whole bowl of hot sauce. This is a really creamy, silky hot sauce texture. I think because of the peaches. I have both pints and half pints here. I would rather, I think, can them in half pints, so I should probably start filling those first. This first one I did was a pint. into our jars I'm filling up the canner with some hot water because this sauce is still pretty warm just hot tap water wiping the rims down and then I had a little leftover so this is gonna go in the fridge and we're gonna enjoy this Because I used half pints, I can double stack in here. So I'm gonna put an extra tray down. I'll put my pints on the top, and then I'm gonna fill the water to cover those. Now we're gonna have this come up to a boil. And once it boils, we're gonna water bath can it for 20 minutes. Let's go ahead and get this blend it up and then we're going to get going on our jalapeno papas because I am going to pressure can this in here I think I am once again the proud owner of a stick blender thank you you know who you are I really appreciate it and I talk about it all the time that a stick blender is one of the most important kitchen equipment essentials and mine has been broken for a long time and so I'm really excited to have this back in my kitchen. So we are going to blend this up until it's really smooth. It is so much easier to do this this way than using the mixer or the blender like I did for the last few canning sessions we've done together. 
you can see how nice and thick this is. So I'm gonna let this just continue to simmer away. For the jalapeno popper recipe, you need 15 to 20 jalapenos. So I think I'm gonna one and a half this recipe. And we need some sharp cheddar cheese. So I'm going to get that shredded up first. I happen to have everything we need for it. I already even have pre-cooked bacon. So it just worked out perfect that she happened to post this video the day that I'm processing all these peppers. So first things first, I'm gonna get this cheddar cheese shredded. And we needed four ounces for one recipe, so that's probably four ounces. And then for the half, and I'm gonna try to find the crispiest bacon that I cooked up here. And we're gonna chop this up. I'm gonna chop this up really, really small. In our stand mixer, we are gonna add one and a half bricks of cream cheese. Our bacon, our cheddar cheese. I think I shredded way, oh, way too much cheddar. We'll start with, no, I'll just put it in there. If I have too much for these jalapenos, I can put, I can stuff some of the other kind of peppers I have. I'm just gonna add the rest of this cream cheese so I don't have half a block, because I don't know when I will have time to use that. So I can stuff some of the not so spicy peppers too if I have too much filling. So we're gonna turn this on, but before I do, I'm gonna season it with some garlic salt and some black pepper. And that is our filling mixture. So that was really easy. I just happened to have all the ingredients on hand to make that. Now that we have the filling mixture done, we need to prep these jalapenos. I am going to take the seeds and the stems out. So these have been pre-washed and I'll cut them in half. And then I'll just take my fingernail and I'll just kind of scoop out the seeds and the ribs. And then that is the half that we will stuff. Just like that. I had the thought while I'm chopping those peppers, I'm happy with the thickness of this tomato sauce. Why don't I get my electric pressure canner out and I start pressure canning this sauce while I have the stove full? Because I can have this pressure canner working for me while you know this is still simmering and that is on the stove. Because I only have one stove top pressure canner. So what I'm gonna do is fill up these jars and I just looked up pressure canning directions for spaghetti sauce. And so that's what I'm kind of calling this because it has the onions and the garlic in it. So for my elevation, I need to pressure can this for 25 minutes at 11 pounds of pressure, which my electric pressure canner will take care of all that for me. I have the water heating up in the pressure canner right now because this tomato sauce has some serious warmth to it. I am gonna season it with some salt. Oh, it's so beautiful and thick. This is perfect. I freeze dried a bunch of tomatoes this year so that I can do the same process for next year. We have all of our jalapeno poppers. I had a little extra filling, so I took my really small, what kind of peppers are these? Poblano peppers, because they're kind of a little bit spicy. And I'm gonna just frat, flash freeze these in the freezer, just like this, and then 
and I will put them in Ziploc bags once they are completely frozen. Now the recipe does call to put Parmesan cheese and breadcrumbs on the top. I do not have any breadcrumbs right now, so when I go to bake these, I will put the Parmesan cheese and breadcrumbs on the top. I'll just make a note of that. And these smell fantastic. So let me get these in the freezer. Those are gonna go in the new freezer that we have that's gonna be for prepared meals. Our pressure canner is venting, you can probably hear that. While that's venting, I need to get the rest of the peppers chopped. I'm gonna chop up all these bell peppers. These sweet peppers are gonna go in one bag. These long peppers, I don't even know what these are. I should probably taste one to see if they're hot or not. No, those are really, really sweet. I'm gonna taste one of these too, because I don't know. Mmm, okay. Those are sweet, so I'm gonna chop all those up, put them in a bag, and we're gonna freeze them. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with all the hot peppers. I'm just gonna chop and dice them. Those are obviously gonna go into a different bag, and that'll be kind of fun. That'll be kind of fun to be able to grab a handful of hot peppers and throw in a dish and grab, you know, my sweet peppers. The hot sauce is boiling, so I have set the timer for the hot sauce. And then this has one more minute to vent. When it's done venting, I'll close the lid, I'll push the next button, and then it'll pressure can for me. I have got five more quart jars out with a little bit of salt. When this is cooling, I'll fill these jars up so we can get them loaded in there. Having pre-prepped veggies in the freezer is one of my favorite convenience items when it comes to preparing meals in the fall and winter. This can be a little bit of a tedious process, but in the long run, I think it's totally worth it. These, all these peppers are homegrown and I'm super, super proud of this. I also really love these silicone bags. I got a few more of them and they are amazing. I love them. I can link them down below. And we are getting our beautiful hot sauce out of the canner. This is probably one of the best hot sauces I have ever had. It's sweet, it's spicy, it is so good. I bubbled over that hot sauce and it burnt onto my stove, so I don't want to use this anymore. I want to soak that in some water. So what I'm gonna do is take my tomato sauce, and I'm just gonna move it over, and I'm not gonna cook that down anymore. And we're gonna go ahead and use this burner to pressure pan. And I have, I just dumped out quite a bit of the water because we don't need all that water. This is hot water. These are really hot tomatoes. You want the contents of your jars and the contents of your water to be about the same temperature, which it is, because that's when you're gonna get glass breaking, jars breaking. One of the reasons, you can get jars breaking for multiple reasons, but one of the reasons is because of that. So I can fit seven quarts in my stovetop pressure canner, Presto pressure canner, and I can fit five quarts in my electric. And I like both of them for different reasons. This one I like because it fits more, but I have to actually pay attention to the dial gauge. This one I love because I don't have to pay attention to it at all. I have a little too much water in there. So now for this one, we actually have to seal the lid. When we were water bath canning in this, we didn't have to close the lid. So we're gonna close that. We're gonna let it vent for 10 minutes, just like this one. We're gonna have steam come out of this. It's gonna vent for 10 minutes. And then I'll put the weight on it. I can link both of these pressure canners down below if you're interested in getting into canning. A few of you guys have messaged me and told me you have gotten your electric pressure canner and that you love it and that just warms my heart because I love that thing and I think it was worth every single penny. The following day I didn't get to all the canning this night. I had one more round I needed to do and so it was just so nice being able to throw those last few jars cold from the refrigerator into my electric pressure canner with cold water and I could just process them and get other things done. So now that everything is canning here, 
I have the rest of them ready to go into the next canner. We have reached pressure with our electric pressure canner. I'm going to start doing some cleaning and just finishing processing these hot peppers. I did not have the energy to chop these hot peppers by hand, so I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and just do a rough chop in the food processor, throw it into a Ziploc bag. I ran out of my quart reusable Ziploc bag, so I just put it in one of these freezer bags, and then I can just grab, you know, a couple tablespoons of hot peppers that are pre-diced to throw into my recipes all winter long. And these are pretty hot, so I won't need too many of them. And then I probably should have been wearing gloves when I did this, but I was so tired of putting gloves on. I just kind of made it work. <laughs> and then I did take half of those egg bites and half of the egg bites I threw in the refrigerator and half the egg bites I put in the freezer. So Josh has been really enjoying those egg bites. I haven't taken any of the egg bites out of the freezer. These are the ones that went in the freezer. I'm not sure how we're going to like these egg bites coming out of the freezer. I will keep you guys posted. I'm sure they're going to be just fine. And then we got three of these two quart bags full of sweet peppers. Now it is time to clean up. I don't know if you can see on the floor that I spilled my entire compost bowl onto the floor and I have a huge mess. Typically, Josh is the one who takes care of the floors. He bought himself a really fancy vacuum and a really fancy electric mop thing and he loves to clean the floors. But I could not leave the floors this messy for him. So I went ahead and I took the time to sweep up all of these pepper seeds from my mess from spilling the compost bowl. It was pretty disappointing when I spilled that bowl because this was a mess. So I am gonna clean up the bulk of the mess and then Josh will come in and he will sweep and mop using, or vacuum and mop, I should say, using his fun new toys. If your husband ever comes to you and says they wanna buy a fancy vacuum, let them because they will love to vacuum for you. One thing we did not get to today was blending up our hot sauce and processing and finishing, adding that little extra ingredients and finishing these fermented hot sauces. What I can do, the cool thing about ferments is I can throw these in the refrigerator. I'm gonna put these in my garage fridge and that's going to basically slow down the fermentation process to a halt. So these are very fermented. It's been a week since they've been in these jars, I think. They smell, oh my gosh. This is the um, ghost pepper one. There is something super sweet about the ghost pepper. I mean, I'm probably not, well, I'll probably taste this hot sauce, but it'll probably blow my head off. But I can put these in basically like a freezed time zone by putting them in the fridge, and then I can honestly deal with them in a month or two if I want to. I don't plan to wait that long. I plan to process them probably when we get home, but I don't have to deal with them right now. Just throwing them in the fridge, they will be set. What happens is in that really cold refrigerator, it stops the microbes from really processing the sugars. Room temperature, or the warmer it is, the faster it breaks down. Cooler it is, it slows down, so I'm not gonna have to worry about mold once I put these in the fridge. I am still shaking my apple brandy and vodka, just to make sure we don't have any spoilage on that. And into the fridge, these go. This pressure canner is done, so I'm gonna empty it. I love this thing so much. I'm gonna get it reloaded back up. The stovetop pressure canner is also done. I have turned it off and I'm just gonna let it cool. It takes a long time to depressurize and cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put cold water in here because now that my jars that need to go in the canner are basically room temperature because they've been sitting for a while, I don't wanna put them in this hot water because that's how I could break my jars. And I want to finish pressure canning in here because I'm done in the kitchen today. <laughs> I was gonna make dinner tonight, but we have leftovers. So it's leftovers for dinner. And so I'll make dinner before I head out of town Wednesday morning tomorrow so that Josh can have some leftovers while I'm gone and eat dinner. And I'll, I'll either take out a freezer meal from the freezer and I'll either cook it up tomorrow for him 
or I'll just give him instructions on how to cook it and that way he can have some dinners, multiple different things he can choose from while I'm gone. That will take care of his dinner, lunch, and we got the egg bites, but I'm also gonna grab out some zucchini muffins so that he can have some of the egg bites and zucchini muffins for breakfast and it's not, you know, he'll be able to either choose one or the other, but knowing him, he'll probably want to have a little bit of the protein and then a little bit of a sweeter side dish with his breakfast. So that water is basically just room temperature now and I'm gonna put in our jars. I am done for the evening when it comes to being in the kitchen. So if I use my stovetop canner, I would have to be in here and watch the gauge and make sure that it stays at the right temperature. And I don't feel like doing that. I wanna go sit down and relax. I'm going to restart this. Pressure can. Oh, no, we're pressure can for 25 minutes. Insert jars, so now it's gonna heat up. Easy peasy. So that was a very productive day. I did not get the dishes done. The dishwasher is leaking, and so it's an easy fix for Josh. He just has to come home and fix it, so I'm not gonna worry about the dishes till probably later this evening or tomorrow morning. I need to finish doing laundry tonight, and all oh, my chickens are cute there out there so that I can pack for going to Virginia so if you guys are going to be at the Homesters of America conference I don't know if this video is coming out it'll probably come out while I'm there and you see me come say hi because that's the biggest reason why I'm going I'm really excited to hang out with you that was the best part last year was just hanging out with you guys the whole time the cool thing about HOA is they record all the classes so if you don't make it to the class, you can watch the replay. I can link that down below. They are, I think, sold out at this point, the tickets, but you can still register and watch all the classes on the replay if you want. So I only went to a few classes last year and I watched most of them on the replay because I was hanging out with you guys the whole time and that was really fun. So I just wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my kitchen as we kind of are working on wrapping up this harvest season. There's still some more to do. I said when we were organizing the freezers, some of the harvest, because we were in transition, I just threw a bunch of stuff in the freezer that actually needs to end up in jars. And so we will continue to process that stuff. But I got the majority of the fresh stuff taken care of today. Like I said, I'm gonna cook dinner tomorrow probably. So those green beans do need to be taken care of and I'll probably just make those for dinner tomorrow and then Josh can eat those as leftovers.